Okay, welcome back. I'd like to continue on with this conversation about adoption of an idea and share with you the actual tool and process that you can use to identify your key stakeholders in your community based on this theory from Everett Rogers. So in this process of actually identifying these key stakeholders, which Tim Dalmo and I developed based on the work of Everett Rogers, there are five steps, sequential steps to take. So I'd like to just briefly walk you through these steps. There is also a link on my website uh, that tells you it's, uh, about the more detail about how to follow this process, but the purpose of this video is to kind of walk you through, make it a little simpler to use by just literally walking you through these steps. So let's say that uh, you have uh, a key initiative in a community and you're really curious about, well, who are the key stakeholders who need to be involved in not only informing us about this possible work, but helping us design this work so that the work will be successful and that those key connectors will actually help mobilize lots of other people just because of their presence in this particular project in the design team. So the first thing you want to do is actually clarify the population. Are we working with the entire community? Are we working with the city in the community? If you're working in an organization, is it the entire organization? Is it certain departments? Might it be certain stakeholder groups and client and customer groups? So the very simple first step is actually clarifying that population. And you can do that with, a, with the actual initial design team. So that's getting clar clarity about not only the outcomes, but then the population itself. Then your next step is to do a first cut of identifying the early adopters. So what, what you would want to do in that particular step is the, the first group of people, the design committee, would have identified about, oh, maybe 20 other people that they think meet the conditions of either being uh, a maven, an information maven, which is a type of key connector, a salesperson, which are people who have lots of influence with a lot of other people, and what's called a true connector, and those are people who are uh, know lots of people. So you would ask those, those initial group of people to identify this possible list of 20 people. Most of those people themselves may be, or find out to be at the very end, some of the people you want involved in the design process. So that you identify that initial list, you convene that group of 20 people, you do a brief input about the adoption of an idea model, which you now have in one of the other prior videos, and then you have them identify who they think across the entire community are either mavens, um, connectors, or salesmen, or simply just these early adopters. So that group goes out and they identify a larger group of people. All of those 20 people go out and identify a much larger group of people. That information is then collected and you make a large grid of all of the people, literal people who have been identified. There'll be lots of overlaps and you're hoping for lots of overlaps of people. So you make that initial grid. You bring back the group 20 once again. And in step four, what they do is they then sort those people that have been identified in the grid against the various population sectors in the community. So that might be various ethnic groups, it might be religious groups. So you're trying to find out does, where does each person fall? Are they connected across multiple sectors? You then take those people who are identified across multiple sectors, multiple population groups, and in the fourth step where you're identifying the core, you would sort those people against key criterion of what you're looking for. It can be people involved in education, and can be people involved in crime prevention. It can be people involved in poverty initiatives. It depends upon the outcomes of the project. So you're doing like a double sorting. The first sorting is to, to look at those people in terms of where they are in a population group, and then you take the ones that are across multiple population groups, and now you're looking at them across the key uh, criteria or issues, issue groups. From that group, you do the decision matrix, which is reported on 
and other video blogs, and you can find those on my website as well uh, as the decision matrix for more detail. And you end up weighting the people uh, in terms of how connected they are to each of those issues. And out of that process falls through a very uh, kind of a qualitative but objective process falls the most important early adopters across your entire population group. And in a very simple order, you have identif identification of those key connectors, that three to five percent of people that you can then invite in to a process and see if they're willing to work with you to, a, to design the project, the mission, the vision, the strategies about how to approach this issue. So in a nutshell, there you have the steps involved in how to identify early adopters. Take care now. Thank you.